You're more okay than me. Shit. That explosion took out the commander. We have a job to do. We're still gonna do it. It's just... Landing in one minute. Should be able to see it coming up on my right. Howdy folks and welcome back to The Division with the Mighty Jingles. So that could have gone a bit better. Turns out myself and the badly injured Agent Lau are the only two Division agents active in Manhattan. Although you could have fooled me, I can see an awful lot of Division agents running around but hey, who am I to argue with the story? Once you've arrived here at Camp Hudson on the banks of the Hudson River on the Midtown West side of Manhattan, this is pretty much where the game really starts. Camp Hudson is a disaster relief site set up under the control of the Joint Task Force on the banks of the Hudson River, and it's the first place you see when you finally arrive in Manhattan after completing the tutorial in Brooklyn. The first thing you all want to do on arrival is check out the Situation Board. It's basic, no, no, the Situation Board. No jingles, ignore the stash. There's nothing in the stash for now. That's going to be useful later. The Situation Board, on the other hand, is basically a big go here, dumbass marker. It tells you where you should be going and what you should be doing. Checking the situation board in an area populates your map with a whole bunch of missions, encounters and side missions. Although the most important thing that you probably should be doing once you've left Camp Hudson and you've entered Manhattan proper is to establish a permanent base of operations and you're going to be doing that at the US Postal Service's Post Office building on Pennsylvania Plaza just opposite Madison Square Garden. Manhattan has definitely seen better days. It certainly didn't look quite like this the last time I was there. The genetically engineered smallpox green poison virus, which is responsible for the carnage that you can see in the streets of Manhattan, has a 90% mortality rate. The source of the contamination were contaminated $20 bills put into circulation during the Black Friday shopping frenzy. The government's response was to send in a joint task force consisting primarily of local first responders, police department, fire department, paramedics, and the New York National Guard. They were completely unable to deal with the scale of the disaster. The center of Manhattan has now been sealed off and is effectively a dark zone. More on that later. Rioters, looters, criminal gangs and rogue private military companies now control the streets, making life exceptionally hazardous for the 10% of the population that managed to survive the virus. The White House invoked special powers under Directive 51, activating the division. The first wave division agents were all sent into Manhattan and all either ended up dead or missing in action in very short order. The president then activated the second wave of the division and this is where you come in. Now, I kind of have a problem with this because who exactly are the division? Well, as is made clear in the intro of the game, the division could be you, it could be me, it could be anybody. Specially trained, well, more on that in a moment. Um, <laughs> Basically, the Division are just ordinary Joes, native to the area in which they're activated. They could be bartenders, they could be your best friend, they could be firemen, they could be paramedics, they could be personal trainers, they could be criminal defence lawyers. The whole idea behind the Division is that the government has a group of agents in place ready to respond at a second's notice to any kind of disaster that may unfold. 
and the Division have unlimited powers. They can shoot who they want, they can take what they want, they can do what they want. But they're just bartenders! <laughs> Seriously? Now, no disrespect to bartenders, I've known some pretty badass bartenders in my time, but I can think of a slightly more effective response to a disaster on the scale that's just struck Manhattan in the Division than to equip a bunch of bartenders and personal trainers with assault weapons. <laughs> and send them in all guns blazing, with power of command over, I hasten to add, the Joint Task Force, who consists of, let's not forget, National Guard and the New York Police Department. <laughs> Taking orders from bartenders with assault rifles. So, yeah, ludicrous. But that's the basic story of The Division. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it says a lot about me that this is the only thing that I found really preposterous about The Division, whereas most people found the fact that this wasn't... Well, there are certain expectations that you have when you attach the name Tom Clancy to a game. You expect a third-person tactical shooter, and The Division looks like a third-person tactical shooter, and this was kind of the problem that most people have had with the game so far. It, it might look like a third-person tactical shooter, but it isn't a third-person tactical shooter. It's a massively multiplayer online role-playing game that just happens to look like a third-person tactical shooter. Now, I don't have a problem with that, but I can appreciate why a lot of people had their expectations very rudely shattered when uh, this game turned out to not quite be the kind of game they were expecting it to be, since, you know, it's got the whole Tom Clancy name attached to it. GTF radio channels. Unit 43, be advised, you have incoming division agents as backup to your location. That's right. That's right, badasses. Bartender with assault rifle incoming. <laughs> All you National Guardsmen and New York City Police Department officers, you can relax. The bartender with the assault rifle is here to save the day. <laughs> the government could have sent in SEAL Team 6, but no. <laughs> no, I'm here instead. Oh, yeah. As you can see, at its heart, uh, the Division is a cover shooter. Now you can stand in the open and blaze away with your assault rifle, but the game's kind of balanced around the fact that you're going to be, or should be, in cover while taking shots at targets. Stand in the open, you'll get killed very, very quickly. Which is what would happen if you were stupid enough to stand in the open, in the middle of an automatic weapon gunfight. Blind firing over the top there. Reduces your exposure, but also reduces your accuracy. And there's an elite down there, you can tell by the yellow health bar. And all of that armour that he has at the top of his health bar. He's going to take some killing. It's going to be easier, of course, to take out the regular Joes. who just have red health bars. Reduce the amount of fire that's coming back in my direction. At the moment, I don't actually have any real skills. That's going to come once I get this base operation set up in the post office, and it's a really, really interesting game mechanic that they have here in the division. First, of course, we're going to have to take these guys down, and then I can show you what I'm talking about. Looks like we're getting the upper hand. He's only got two bars of armor left. This is one of the things that people found preposterous about this game, and which... Well, how many how many bullets have I put into this guy? A lot. And he's not going down. It's not a tactical shooter. It's a role-playing game. He has a health bar. He's a boss. It takes time to put him down. Now, if that whole concept turns you off, well, you're probably not going to enjoy playing this game, but it is what it is. Let's get a bit closer. There we go, even I can't miss from here. Got him. Oh, he's dropped some loot. Any others? Yep, there's one. Oh crap, he's caught me in the open. Reload, kill him. There, now you see how much damage you take when you stand in the open and you're not in cover and you get into a gunfight with automatic weapons. Far too much to be healthy and I'm out of med kits.
Oh, grenade. There's a much more efficient way of dodging out of the way of grenades, by the way. Just double tap your spacebar and you do a dodge roll into the nearest available cover. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. I'm still just a little level 4 noob. Dispatch. Situation outside is now under control. Uh, we've done it. The division saved our story after. That's right. Thanks for the report, Bravo Squad. Uh, stay alert out there and keep it frosty. I'm glad you made it. Now let's rebuild our base. Go on in and have a look around. I finally got some transportation, so I'm inbound. Let's do this. That's right, the division saved your sorry asses. Bartenders with machine guns everywhere, thank you for your service. <laughs> okay, let's go and check out our brand new base of operations. Agents, we need our base up and running, and we need to show the people of New York they're getting their city back. Our base of operations has potential, but right now it's a piece of shit and we've got no one to staff it. To get this place where it needs to be, we need people who know what they're doing. Like doctors. There's a virologist running a field hospital over at Madison Square Garden, but the whole area has gone to shit. With her, we can get our medical facilities online. Without her... The JTF commander, Benitez, is out in the field and he's gone offline. Bring him back. We need him to set up a functional security wing, and it'll do a hell of a lot for morale. We've also got to restore basic services. We need power, and the intel the grid can give us. They had a guy working on that, but it sounds like he ran into trouble patching us in. Without him, it's lights out. Isaac can map itself to each of the wings in the base and sync their progress, so we can have a bigger picture of what's happening here. And the more stable this base is, the better shape the city will be in. So, let's check out our new place in the Pennsylvania Plaza the Post Office. The wing is a wreck right now. Once we get that virologist over here, we can build up a staff, investigate the origin of the virus, and start getting more supplies. For civilians, but for us as well. Your base has three different wings, and they're all offline at the beginning. The medical wing requires the services of the virologist, Dr. Jessica Candell. We're going to have to find and recruit her before we can actually put the services of the medical wing online. Next, the security wing. The security wing needs some love, and Captain Benitez. The JTF loved the guy. He can mobilize them and help us get the intel and firepower we need to get all these hostels off the streets. Security Wing's in a similar situation. Without the leadership of NYPD Police Captain Roy Benitez, there's absolutely nothing happening in here. So we're going to need to find him, get him back here to run the security wing for us. And then finally, there's the technical wing, power and services. The wing has obviously seen better days. But if you can get Rhodes back here, he's apparently got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Former PMC, I think. Knows more than you think he does. I suspect he'll be very useful. And just like in the other two wings, the tech wing is missing one vital member of the staff that we need to get things up and running. Paul Rhodes, former private military contractor, lost his faith in Iraq, and is a real hard-ass, but he's the man that we need to run the tech wing. And the thing about these three different wings of your building are that they're not just different wings of your building. It's probably better to consider them part of your character because, well, more on that in a moment. Hey, bad news. I'm not going to be able to get out there. Not with my goddamn leg like this. I'll do what I can from here, but it's not the same. You have no idea how much I wanted to be in the field. I trained for a scenario like this my entire life, but it's worse than anything we could have imagined. You know how they won't let you get too close to anyone, so it won't mess you up when you're finally activated? Well, I did that, and it didn't fucking work. I'm attached. These are my people. This is my city. We're taking it back. Oh. Look, you need to... Yeah, okay. Okay. They're counting on us. Let's not let them down. So, what do you mean, part of your character? I mean, surely your base of operations is just where you go between missions to buy and sell stuff at the various vendors. Well, no, it really is so much more than that. Once you unlock and upgrade the various different facilities contained within each of the three wings, tech, security, and medical, this is what actually allows access to the abilities that you take out into the field with you. So, for example, if you want to upgrade the virus filter on your contamination mask in order to allow access to more heavily contaminated areas of the city, 
you're going to have to install the virology lab in the medical wing. In order to do that, of course, first we're going to have to recruit Dr. Jessica Candell, and she is currently being held prisoner by a bunch of rioters and looters in Madison Square Garden, which, handily enough, is just across the road from your base of operations. What the hell are you doing? You're hurting him! Listen up. I spent six years in medical school. I don't give a shit what you saw on TV while you were jerking off to soap operas in your mom's basement, but setting a bone isn't pretty. You want your buddy fixed? You get your gun out of my face! Is that a threat, bitch? I'm just telling you the truth. And that was her. And she's just over the road in Madison Square Garden. So, let's go in, all guns blazing. I'm a barkeeper with an assault rifle, and I have no idea how to use it. We'll hold here to cover your back. Then we'll escort the medical personnel when you retrieve them. You don't want to come in with me. You know, you are US Army National Guardsmen after all. <laughs> Just... No? Alright, fine. Do it myself. Two down, one to go. Oh, another one. I like the M4. There's a huge range of weapons available in this game, but the M4, it's a very stable weapon. The damage per bullet isn't the same as on, for example, an equivalent level AK, or even a light machine gun, but, well, the barrel tends to stay where you're pointing it. Oh, hang on a sec. Jingles, you're in the open. Jingles, get into cover. Jingles, you've just lost half your health. <laughs> if you patch me into the security system, I might be able to find Candle's location. Alright. Um, later on, I upgrade to a light machine gun, which offered a massive theoretical DPS boost over the M4 that I was using. Unfortunately, you just couldn't keep the bullets going where you were, because the, the, the barrel kicked so much, there was so much recoil on it. Uh, so it actually ended up being a net DPS loss. Unfortunately, I couldn't go back to the M4 because I'd sold it, so yeah, that made me quite sad. Hatched in. Let's see what I can find. Can you see the CCTV feed? Looks like Candle and her staff are being forced to treat their wounded. That's the only reason they're still alive. Madison Square Garden itself, which the Catastrophic Emergency Response Agency, who are all dead now by the way, have turned into a massive disaster relief station. Which has now been taken over by New York's rioters and looters. One of them less to worry about. Uh, reload jingles. Yeah, there you go. Oh, grenade! Jingles, don't stand there. Yeah. That'll be a tear gas grenade then which plays hell with your aim, as well as your vision. Jingles, why didn't you dodge right out of the way? Well, because at this stage of the game I didn't know how. What? I haven't finished dealing with the first lot. Give me a break. Here they come. Technically, this is the equivalent of a World of Warcraft dungeon. And you could do this as part of a group. Additional hostiles detected. Doing these instances in a group has plus points and negative points. The negative points are that there are a lot more enemies and there are a lot more veterans mixed in with those enemies. The difficulty scales with the number of players in the group. Grenade! Jingles, get out of there! No, no. Well, could have been worse, I suppose. <laughs> At least I'm still alive. On the plus side, well, it becomes easier to deal with the bosses when there are more players in the group. Particularly, well, you'll see what happens when we come to face the final boss. In uh, Jingles, that isn't actually cover. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that is, though. Right, we'll fight them from here. Now, they're tossing more tear gas grenades, but they're not actually making it through the entranceway. They're lobbing them up and they're hitting the wall and dropping down once again. 
this actually works to my benefit, because if they want to come through here to get me, they're going to have to run through the cloud of tear gas, and that's going to give me the advantage. One down. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this shotgun. Back to the M4. His armor's gone, as is most of his health, and we got him. Scandal and her staff are still upstairs, stashed in the kitchen at Kobe's. Really? Because I'm sure you just had me watching CCTV footage of Candle operating on the riot as wounded. Um, well, here. <laughs> so, so how do you know that she's... Oh, I don't know. There are certain points within the division where it's best if you just don't ask too many questions. Questions like, why am I here? And how come SEAL Team 6 has better things to do? <laughs> Anyway, let's head upstairs to the kitchen at Kobe's. One quick firefight later, I've cleared out another bunch of Nerdu wells and rescued Candel and her medical staff, but now we have to secure the roof for extraction. And it's at this point where I ran into the first major issue of doing these instances solo as opposed to in a group. Well, actually, that's not completely fair. Um, later on in the game, once you've actually set up your base of operations, you're entirely capable, without too many problems whatsoever, of completing all of the game's story instances solo. You don't have to group up in order to do them. It is fun to group up, but it's not a requirement. At this stage of the game, however, because you don't have your base of operations set up, remember we're in here to recruit one of the personnel who is going to set up the medical wing for us, for example. Candle made it to your position. Affirmative. Your staff just arrived. As soon as the hostiles on the roof are gone, we'll get her across safely. And until we do get the base of operations at least partially up and running, I don't really have access to any of the special talents, perks or abilities that are going to make boss fights in particular a lot more manageable if you're trying to do them solo. And that became abundantly apparent as I was attempting to deal with the final boss in this Madison Square Garden instance here on the rooftop Garden the Helicopter Extraction Site. That's him, up there on the rooftop. See, so he's got the yellow health bar, and he's got the armor bar with segments up top. Now, he's armed with a light machine gun, and from this kind of range, his LMG doesn't do that much damage to me. But as I deal with his minions, he's going to start getting a bit closer. See, the problem when you're doing this solo is that when he's unleashing bursts from his machine gun like this, uh, whichever target has generated the most aggro on him, uh, who's currently holding threat, there's nobody else with you who can get around the flank and shoot him up. And you can kind of tag team him if you're in a group of two at least. If you're doing this by yourself, well, you can't do that. And I don't have access to any of the other special abilities that would allow me to turn the tables on him. Because, well, I'm here to earn access to all of those special abilities. That's why I'm here in the first place. I don't have my Seeker Mines. I don't have my Mobile Cover. I don't have my Cover Reinforcement abilities. I've got a Riot Shield, but because my equipment is so terrible, because I've just started, I'm only level 4, the Riot Shield can absorb very, very little damage. And that light machine gun cuts through it like a hot knife through butter. And so I ended up having to do this a lot. Eventually, I just had to resort to sniping away at the bits that were sticking out from cover while he was reloading the machine gun and hiding while he was firing the machine gun because I just couldn't take the damage output that this guy was kicking out. And it was slow and it was boring and it wasn't an awful lot of fun, but it did get the job done. Come on, it's nearly down. Got him. Got the medic safely across. Candle and all staff accounted for. No casualties. We're off to a good start, agents. Wish I could have had your back out there, but I think we make a hell of a team anyway. When you get back to the base, we'll talk to Candle and we'll see what she can do for us. Agent Lau's very modest, isn't she? I wish I could have had your back out there. Yeah, I wish she could have had my back out here as well, but she thinks we make a hell of a team while well, she's sitting on her ass <laughs> in the post office telling me what to do. Oh, I don't know. This is significantly easier in a group, purely because, well, when the boss's focus his attention on one member of the group, 
another member of the group can get around and shoot him up without being shot at. Which, I'm sure you'll agree, makes things substantially easier. But it's only really tough to solo because I'm such low level. Uh, I must stress that all of the instances in the game are entirely soloable. Uh, once you've established that base of operations and unlocked the security wing, the tech wing, and the medical wing, and you've actually got access to the abilities that your character's going to rely on to get them out of a tight corner in a firefight. But anyway, I got it done. So back to base, and let's get this medical wing up and running now that we've rescued Dr. Campbell, or Candell, I can never remember which, from the uh, looters who were holding a hostage at Madison Square Garden. Well, look who it is. Thanks for getting me out of the garden. I've been in some hostile work environments before, but Jesus. Of course, it's not like this place is going to win any prizes either. Antique equipment, zero staff, patients lining up out the door. This isn't going to cut it. We're doing the best we can, Dr. Candle. Any suggestions you might have, I'm happy to listen. I know, I know. Beggars, choosers, all that crap. What matters is beating this thing, but I can't do that without knowing more about it. And here's a good place to start. Sarah is pretty sure Dr. Gordon Amherst had something to do with the outbreak. God. That asshole. Saw him present a paper at Columbia once, he nearly started a riot. He's part of this. I need to talk to him. Anything of his you can find. Notebooks, laptops, close personal friends, I need that too. And we need to talk about live samples and antibodies. You're gonna be busy. And you'll be? Fixing this. Saving lives. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll get started. No, Doc, you're, you're welcome. Don't mention it. <laughs> well, anyway. Medical wing unlocked. Dr. Candle rescued. Now we get to choose the first of our upgrades for the medical wing, and this is going to provide us with special abilities that we take out into the field with us. You can see the upgrades that are available, you can see the upgrades that we can afford. Some of the upgrades require other upgrades before you can build onto them. So for example, I can't afford the disaster unit yet because that's a thousand resources and only have 700 supplies. And I can't yet build the hazmat unit or the intensive care unit until I've built the virus lab. I'm going to start with the clinic, and that's going to give me access to the first aid skill, which is going to give me a heal, which is on a cooldown, but it's not just a personal heal, it also has an area of effect, and will also heal any allies within a reasonably close distance around me. Now that's what I call an improvement agent. You should charge more. So that's given me access to the first aid skill, but it's also telling me that I've unlocked a new perk, which has increased my medkit carrying capacity by one, so now I can carry more medkits. The difference between a skill and a perk is that perks are active all the time, regardless of which skills you've selected to go out into the field with. At the moment I'm level 5, I can only equip one skill, but all of the perks that I unlock in all of the different wings of the base are active 100% of the time. Now, I still have 200 supplies left over, so I can unlock the decontamination unit, the pharmacy, the counselling section, or the paediatric care section. Paediatric care is going to give me two talents and another perk which increases the amount of medkits I can carry by a further one. So that's the one I've gone for. And this is why your base of operations in the division is really more of an extension of your character and not just a place where you go to chill out between missions and sell all of the junk that you've picked up on the streets. Each wing of the base, medical, technical and security, have a bunch of skills assigned to them which are unlocked and upgraded as you unlock and upgrade the various different facilities within the base. Do you remember I used my remaining 200 supplies to unlock the paediatric care section within the medical wing? That's given me access to two talents which I can use. At the moment I can only choose one of the talents available because I'm only level 5. My second talent slot becomes available at level 15. It's entirely possible that somebody's done something like this in a game before, but it's the first time I've ever seen it. The fact that upgrading and maintaining your base is just as important, if not more so than upgrading your character, because upgrading your base gives you talents, skills and abilities that make your character stronger out in the field. So, that's the medical wing unlocked. One down, two to go. And coming up in the next episode, we're going to get that security wing unlocked. And to do that, we're going to have to find out what's happened to New York Police Department Police Captain Roy Benitez. Coming up in the next episode of The Division with the Mighty Chiefs. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.